Yesterday, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres urged uh, China to follow the recommendations of the UN report on uh, Xinjiang. Uh, will China follow what uh, Mr. Guterres suggested? Yesterday, China has elaborated on its stern position on the release of the so-called assessment on Xinjiang. The so-called assessment is a patchwork of disinformation that serves as a political tool for the U.S. and some Western forces that orchestrated and produced the assessment. There's a saying in China that is to confess without being pressed. Upon the assessment's release, a handful of Western countries could not wait to make an issue of the assessment, which exposes their sinister agenda to use Xinjiang-related lies to contain China. This shows that they are the forces behind this false assessment. It also shows once again that the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights has made up the assessment due to the political agenda of some anti-China forces overseas and has been reduced to an enforcer and accomplice of some U.S. and Western forces to force the developing countries to fall into the line. But the handful of Western countries, including the U.S., cannot represent the international community. The mainstream of the international community opposed the release of this false assessment and are very concerned about the pressure on the office to release this assessment. Recently, more than 60 countries have written to the high commissioners to emphasize that the Xinjiang-related affairs are purely China's internal affairs and they are gravely concerned about the assessment without relevant mandate. And a nearly a thousand Chinese and foreign non-governmental organizations have co-signed a letter to the High Commissioner where they deplored the release of a assessment on Xinjiang without mandate and without factual basis. What the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights should truly focus on is the physical and cultural genocide against Native Americans by the U.S. and Western forces, more than slavery and forced labor of the trafficked persons, systemic racism targeting ethnic minorities, civilian casualties caused by gun violence, historical regression of women's rights, the abuse of torture in overseas black sites, unilateral sanctions that seriously violate other countries' human rights, and the killing of civilians in overseas military operations. On these issues, the spokesperson for the foreign ministry has made our position clear. We ask the Office of the, the Commissioner for Human Rights to pay more attention to these issues, raise accountability, and release reports on that, so that they can offer a responsible explanation to the international community and the many victims. I will also invite you to do a thorough investigation into the composition of the office and its source of finance. A handful of Western countries, including the U.S., account for less than 10% of the world population. However, they take up more than 80% of the posts in the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Can they really represent the majority of countries in the world? Due to the political scheme and pressure from overseas anti-China forces, the Office, based on disinformation, has fabricated the assessment, which seriously violates the principles of universality, objectivity, non-selectivity, and non-politicization. What they have done only shows that they have already become the accomplice and enforcer of the U.S. and Western forces to force developing countries to fall into line. And human rights is nothing but a cheap weapon they can use. Such acts can in no way represent the UN, still as the international community. The Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, as part of the UN Secretariat, must abide by and uphold the purposes and principles of the UN Charter, defend the sovereignty of its member states, and refrain from interfering in the internal affairs of the member states. Due to the manipulation of Western forces, the so-called assessment runs counter to these principles. The member states of the UN should hold it accountable. China will steadfastly pursue the human rights development course with Chinese characteristics and continue to make our contribution to human rights development in China and the whole world.